Hey, what's up? Welcome back to uh, this new video. This one is paper 3-2 of May-June 2015 for A-Level Math. Uh, with that being said, let's move on to the questions that I have for you today. So here we have question number one. We have to use the trapezium room, a rule. So obviously this is not in paper 3 anymore. It's only in paper 2, so we can just skip this one. There's no need to do this for paper, paper 3. Now let's move on to uh, question number 2. So, um, here we have to use the substitution of u equal to 4 power x, okay. And then we have to solve this equation. Solving means finding the value of x eventually, giving your answer correct to 3sf. So one by one, how can you break this down? So we have to use the, the laws of indices, for example here, I understand this is what? 4x plus 2 is equal to 4 power x times 4 power 2. Right. Now I understand the question is asking me to change this to, to u. That should become 16u. 4 power 2 is 16, right? Now we can try to simplify this whole thing one by one and see what happens. So here we have u plus 16 is equal to what value? So here we have 16u. Send this one over here, you will have 16 is equal to 16 minus u should be 15 u. Therefore, u obviously should be 16 divided by 15. But now we do not care about the value of u. We are trying to find the value of x that is the unknown initially, right? So replace u back with 4 power x. Now, because the power here is x and we are trying to find x, we have to bring this down. How? By using the laws of logarithms. We should know if you have, for example, a uh, ln of a power x, we understand we can bring this down in front, it is also equal to x ln of a. Therefore, we can use this concept for this question right here. Apply ln on both sides. Again, ln and log doesn't really matter. You can choose either one. So let's do this ln on both sides. Here you go. Now, let's bring this down because we're trying to find that value as the goal here that will become x ln of 4 is ln of 16 over 15 therefore in the end x will be simply the value of this one divided by ln of 4 so let's see 16 divided by 15 ln of that, that value divided by ln of 4 that should be 0. Point for 0 0.0466 correct to 3sf as required by the by the question that's question number two now let's move on to question number three so here we have what we have um, a curve has equation uh, this one this is my curve it's a trigonometric um, equation that's the first thing that we can think of okay now what else we have to find the x coordinate of the stationary point. So what thing can we think of right away? We should know at stationary point what happens. dy by dx is equal to zero. So that's the thought process behind the question. So once you know this, we have to use this information to find what we need on the curve for this interval. Now this interval is only, this is zero. Pi by two is here, right? It's 90 degrees. I mean, in terms of degrees, this is radians here. It only has to be, it can only be in the first quadrant in this interval. So we only care about the first quadrant right here. Again, the reason why I'm, I'm doing this is because I know by doing this, it will help me save time when I solve this question. But let's proceed and see what happens. So I need to find that x at this point. So let's first find dy by dx, right? So here we have y is equal to cos x and cos 2x. Now you can clearly see this is a product, right? This times this, so we have to use the product rule. Now it is only a formula you have to know. Again, it's best if you learn this by heart, memorize. So dy by dx is what? Let's do it together. It will be, I can leave the first one the way it is. I don't touch this. Multiply by, differentiate this one, that should become two uh, minus sine x, sine 2x, sorry. Here you go. And then we have to write plus. Then now leave this one the way it is. Here you go. 
And now we have to multiply by d by dx. So this one should become minus sine of x. Now simplify. You will have what? You will have the value of minus 2 uh, cos x and sine 2x. And here we have the value of what? That should become minus cos 2x and sine x. Now, to find the, the values of x, we have to equate that to 0 because we understand this happens when this is equal to 0. Now, let's try to play with this. We, we can try to rearrange. Otherwise, again, when you're doing question in relation to uh, trigonometry, I recommend factorize instead of trying to cancel out the values. Let's factorize. Okay. So, first thing first, what is the value over here? What can we change that to? So, we should know sine of 2x is equal to what? Is equal to 2 sine of x cos of x. Okay, let's simplify this whole thing. You will have the value of this times this should become minus 4, 2 times 2 is 4, and here we have sine of x, and cos times cos will be cos squared. Okay, now for this one, um, so clearly we're dealing with uh, cos square over here. We can try to, to change that into cos square because we're dealing with cos square. Now one thing we can do right away is, by observation, before going further, we have something that we can use. For example, I have cos 2x over here, and here we have sine of x is 0. Now because you can see this is common, I can try to factorize them outside to make our life easy. For example, I can take out the value of minus sine of x. Factorize, you will have the value of 4 cos square of x minus cos 2x. Now you can see clearly we have factorized this whole equation. We can solve them for the values of x now. For the first equation we have, sine of x is 0. Again, minus here will just be cancelled, right? It doesn't really matter, right? And then here we have sine. Obviously, we know ASTC, ASTC has to be here or here. But we don't really care about this one because it's only going to be in the first quadrant. So we only look at this angle right here, x. So x can be the value of sine inverse of 0, the value 0 here, and that will be 0. But again, in this question, we don't include zero, so this will not be, be good for your final question. It's not good. So let's use this one now. So here we have 4 cos square x minus cos 2x. Now, can you break this down? Yes, we can kind of break this down into something useful. We should know that cos 2x is equal to what? Now, there's a, there's a formula here to, to help you out with this. You have to learn this by heart, I believe. So we should know it should be 2 cos square x minus 1. So we can use this to help us out. That should become 4 cos square x minus here. Here we have 2 cos square x minus 1. So this minus this should become 2 cos square x plus 1 is 0. Now it seems that something is not is off right now, so it will not be good actually, because if I send this over here, that will become negative, right? So 2 cos square x equals to minus 1. I see the mistake already. Hopefully you guys see that as well, because it's a very dumb mistake. If you factorize the minus sign outside, it will become plus here. Aha, so that's the that's the mistake over here. So become plus here, plus here. And if I put plus here, that will become 6, and that will become minus 1. So that was a silly mistake, so be careful when you factorize and all that, because this will cost you your marks. So finally, we understand cos square of x will be 1 over 6. So now we have to solve this equation. There's two possible values, obviously, because cos of x can be the value of what? Of minus root of 1 over 6, or cos of x can be the value of root of 1 over 6. Now before we proceed to solve the question, we can use the quadrants and make us save time. For example, if cos is negative, it should be in this quadrant and in this quadrant. If cos is positive, it is in this quadrant 
and in this quadrant. However, according to your question, we only care about the, the first quadrant. So therefore, for this one, since it is in the second quadrant, we don't care. Third, we don't care. So there's no need to solve this one at all. So don't waste our time. How about this one? We only care about the first quadrant, perfect. And this one, there's no need to, to solve for this one. So we only care about this angle over here. Now to find this one is pretty easy. That should be x equal to cos inverse of root of 1 over 6. So cos inverse of 1, so root of 1, root of 1 over, over 6. Now we have to use radians here because the question is in terms of radians. That should be 1.15 correct to 3SF as your answer. Again, as you can see, this is very useful to help to help you save time when you are trying to solve this kind of question. Question number three. Now let's move on to question number four. We have to express this whole thing right here in this form. Pretty simple. We use a, a formula, right? So R, what is R? R is equal to square root. That should be three square. That should be nine. Plus two square is four. Root of 13. Now what is the value of theta? Theta should be tan inverse of this one divided by this one. It is only a formula we have to know how to do this. It's always going to be the same case for these kind of conversions. So we have to provide the exact value of r, which is root of 13, and the value of alpha correct you to the similar place. So let's find out. This have to be radians. No, it have to be degrees here. As you can see, the value is degrees. Tan inverse of 2 over 3 that will become 33.69, correct to two decimal place. So finally, this whole thing will change to, change to, r is root of 13 sine of theta plus 33.69. Okay, cool. Now, hence means using part one, solve this equation. Now we have seen from part one exactly this whole thing right here was changed to this. So let's replace this by this because we can. That should become root of 13, sine of theta plus 33.69 equal to 1. We're only trying to find the values of theta between 0 and 180. 0 here, 180 is here, so only in the first two quadrants. All right, so only in the top quadrants. So let's keep this in mind before we solve the question because we we will just we are not we are not trying to waste time when doing this kind of question. So one by one. Now let me call this y to make my life easy. That should become sine of y is equal to 1 over root of 13. Since sine is positive, you can see it has to be in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. The first one will be the angle directly because it's positive, And this one should be 180 minus y. So let's solve this. That will become y will become sine inverse of 1 over root of 13. 1 divided by root of 13, sine inverse of that, that should become 16.1. And 180 minus your answer should be 163.9. Okay, so we have these two values to begin with, but now obviously we're not trying to find the value of y, we're trying to find the value of theta, so let's go and do this. Theta, y is actually theta, plus 33.69 is equal to 16.1 and 163.9. Now simplify. Theta will be 16.1 minus 33.69. That should become minus 17.59 and 163.9 minus 33.69. That should be 130.2. Okay, this one will be on the negative side, it will not be uh, useful. As you can see, it's only between 0 and 180. So this is not good. It will be not good. Now what else can we do? Um, can we change that? We can try to express this as a positive angle. So minus 17.59 plus 360, it will be 342 as a positive angle, but it will be too much for that domain anyways. It will not be useful. So therefore, theta will be only the value of 130.2 degrees, which is in that domain as required, that range. That is your question number four.
Now let's move on to question number five. Okay, so 